present The Lake by Ellen Dryden with James Aubrey and Karen Archer. Go on, I dare you, Ben Wheeler. Walk out to the middle. It's got to be pretty deep. The drought hasn't had much effect. The water level hasn't really fallen. <laughs> we always said it was bottomless when we were kids. It's a lake, Dad. It was a lake last May. It was a lake last summer. It was a lake at Easter. It was a lake since I was three. You're scared. You don't do it. I bet you five pounds you don't walk to the middle. You haven't got five pounds. I won't need it. If the ice breaks, we'll never find you again. Christ! <laughs> nasty. Ooh. Very nasty. Isabel? Hello, darling, it's me. Look, God knows when I'll get back. I'm in the middle of nowhere on the A1. I've just had a rather nasty minor accident. No, 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 no damage, just a bit terrifying. My windscreen shattered, a lorry threw up a chunk of rock. Um, I'm in a pub. I've been in touch with the quick assist people. They'll be here to fit me up with a new windscreen. Oh, God knows. Lincolnshire somewhere. Road works as far as the eye can see. It's a good job I wasn't going any faster. A bit shaken. Made a slight mess of my hand, punching out the windscreen. <laughs> No, don't tell Rosie. I wasn't wearing my lovely driving glove she got me. L look, my card's about to run out. Expect me when you see me. Love you. Bye. Ben? Hmm? What are you doing? Listening. What for? Nothing. The lake. Silence. <clears throat> I suppose we'd better be getting back to the car, hmm? When you're ready? Well, we shouldn't leave them, Isabel. The only harm they'll come to will be self-inflicted. Don't be such an old fusser. They're a hundred yards away in a locked car. Look, Tom's 14 now and six foot tall. You've got to let go a bit. Shh, don't move. There's a kingfisher. Where? Over there by the jetty. What's it doing? Killing its dinner. It's bashing that fish's brains out on the post. Oh, how horrible. Oh, don't be sentimental. I don't care when the thrushes beat up the snails. Fish don't eat my hostas. <laughs> oh, damn. Thanks a bunch, kids. Exit one kingfisher. And he dropped his dinner. The feeding call of the urban teenager. Oh, come on then, let's go and find a burger bar. Vandals. Don't resent them. Well, a two hour drive. They refuse to get out of the car when we get here. And they can't wait five minutes. They're at the worst possible age for the wonders of nature. Does that mean I've bored you to death as well? No, don't be silly. Mm. Are you very annoyed with them? <laughs> no, of course I'm not. I don't annoy that easily. No. No, you're hurt, which is worse. Look, they have been here a few times before, darling. It's never going to be like it was when they were little, and you knew everything there was to know. Oh, no, don't say that. I don't want to be one of those awful, imposing fathers. Depends what you mean by imposing. I don't think you'll get the chance to impose on those two. Oh, Ben, don't look like that. It's supposed to be painful when your children are growing up. Your place is in the wrong. I don't like it when Rosie treats me like a dear old thing who'd swoon with horror if I could really understand what she was going on about. I don't want to be humoured. Neither do I, but it comes with a job. 
They throw up all over your best clothes, stop you sleeping for months on end, dominate your every waking moment, cost an arm and a leg, and then they patronise you. And that's just up to 14. Are you happy? I wouldn't change a moment of it. And you gave up your job? Changed your whole life? It was my choice. Hmm. Good. Don't... Don't tell them about the Kingfisher. No? No, they... They'd feel they had to mock you. Okay. Sorry. I shouldn't have dragged you all up here. Well, there is such a thing as overkill. Overkill? It's lovely here, but you may have shown us more about this lake than we want to know. There are other picnic sites between here and Land's End. When the kids think of picnics, they mean theme parks. So my hidden lake and your wholemeal sandwiches are a joint let down? I'm afraid so. Of course, when they've got kids of their own, they'll be deeply sentimental about it all. Do you remember that lake Daddy always took us to? Wonder if it's still there. <laughs> oh, just you wait. I sulked my way all around Crete when I was 16. I wanted to go to the Algarve. But that's the family holiday I've got the best memories of. You'll see, one day this place will mean as much to them as it does to you. No. I doubt it. <laughs> Was I fantastic or was I fantastic? No, Ben. You were crap as usual. You were crap yesterday and you were crap today. You'll always be crap. If I thought you meant that... All I mean it. Don't think I'm joking. You're a dead weight. Rick and Jamie are mediocre, but oh, you I are evil. That. You've got about as much musical imagination as a toad. Oh, drop it, Leslie. My name is not Leslie. OK, moonshine, <laughs> moonbeam, <laughs> moon boots. Moonstone. <laughs> yeah, that too. Look, forget the art for a minute. We've got money, real money. Yeah. 36 quid money and 50 quid to come on Saturday. If we turn up. So, we can eat for the foreseeable future. And we can drive this heap to the nearest gas station and tell it to fill her up. We don't have to stop at a quid's worth of petrol. We can go where we like. The world is our lobster. Shut up. <laughs> it's bad enough having to drive around and try to play with you morons. I'll go out of my mind if I have to take any more of your stupid chat. You know, Moonstone, I think the loveliest thing about you is your sweet and gentle nature. You're all for peace, love and flowers, except in your personal life, aren't you? All right. Stop the van. I want to get out. Oh, don't be stupid. I said stop the van. I want to get out. I'd rather walk. Don't be ridiculous. We're in the middle of Dartmoor. You stop this bloody van. Don't do that. You stupid little cloud. You want us to crash? Yeah, if it gets one of you. Don't do that. Right. Now, will you stop behaving like a spoiled brat? Go on. Piss off. I'm not coming any further with you. Oh, get back in the van, do you hear me? We're not leaving you here. Come back. With any luck, the silly cow will stumble into a bog and disappear. Oh, go on, Ben. Drive on. I'm hungry. We can't leave her here. Nice little mover, isn't she? Chances are she'll break her ankle trying to run in those shoes and we can pick her up on the way back. Yeah, go on. There's a pub a couple of miles down the road. We can get some food and you can go and look for her. She'll turn up. She always does, worse luck. She may be a brilliant little artist, but Christ, she's a pain in the arse. Still there. Now, what does that look like to you? Where? No, not in the water. Over there. The fella standing by the trees. Oh, yes. A bit early for a stroll, isn't it? And he hasn't got a dog. A local press, do you reckon, Sarge? Glad with the spots, his local press. And he wants to keep it to himself. He thinks he's got an exclusive... National press? No. No, he'd be round here making a nuisance of himself. Well, they'll be here soon enough, and the telly trumping all over everything. No, uh, it's probably the fest of the vultures. How would he know? Well, how do they ever know? You'd better go and have a quiet word with him. Find out who he is, and what he's doing here.
Good morning, sir. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, good morning, officer. Can I help you, sir? Uh, I, no, I was just looking. A bit early, isn't it, sir? I often come here, all times of the day. I used to live here when I was a boy. I like it here. It's, uh, it's peaceful. Yes, sir. Well, I didn't expect to see all this activity. <laughs> Can I ask uh, what you're doing? Dragging the lake, sir. What for? Clever name, sir. If you're a regular... Uh, Wheeler. Ben Wheeler. And you live locally? No, not now. I, li- I live in London. A long way from home, sir. It's my job. I'm a representative with an industrial heating firm. Um, do, you want, do you want my card? Oh, thank you. Good day, sir. Um, what are you looking for? Well, day tripper, I reckon, Sarge. I got his name and address. Right. Says he often comes here. He didn't seem too curious about what was going on. What do you make of that? I don't know. I didn't tell him what we were looking for. He only asked for once. Are the kids invited? It's up to you, Ruth. Yes, I'm perfectly happy to have them. They'll probably be terribly bored. Damn. I was hoping you'd put an absolute embargo on them so that I could dump them on Jack's mother with a clear conscience. I don't quite know how to play this one. I don't want other people's kids, but, but this isn't a normal party. Oh, you know what Ben's like. I think he'd like the whole family here. Well, if you say so. I'm telling you now, though, if Jack and I make it to 15 years, I'm not celebrating my wedding anniversary with all my little nephews and nieces. Or even my own kids. But if you want them... <laughs> well, Tom and Rosie will be there. Oh, Tom and Rosie will be far too busy being grown up to waste any time on their little cousins. Anyway, it's not Tom and Rosie's wedding anniversary, so why unleash my two on poor old Ben? He absolutely loves big family get-togethers. We're the only family he's got. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was your wisest move yet. <laughs> Marrying the only child of defunct parents. <laughs> Never get entangled with a man with four elder sisters, every one of them with the good housekeeping seal of approval. (laughs) (laughs) Heather Mm. actually cleared up my kitchen cupboards the other day. I only slipped out to pick up the kids from school, and when I got back, there she was, all apologetic (laughs) teeth. I hope you don't mind. I opened your cupboard to get the coffee out, and this jar of marmalade almost (laughs) brained me. Another centimetre off balance, and it might have done the job properly. (laughs) Oh, foolish jar. (laughs) <laughs> I know. Would you like Jack's sisters to come to your party? And his uh, mum? That would put Ben right off all these romantic ideas about family life. Uh, no. No, thank you. Mm. Tell you what, though. Would you like me to get Janet to make you a great big anniversary cake? Might be a bit overloaded with tasteful decorations, but it would taste good. And why aren't you listening to me? Oh, uh, no, no, thanks. Look, Tom and Rosie have arranged a cake. Don't mention it, though. I'm not supposed to know. I am listening. But not much. Oh, you are sweet. How much does Ben know about all this? Everything, I should think. But we're all pretending like mad. A bit like Christmas, really. What's worrying you, Izzy? Hmm? Nothing. Nothing, really. Oh, come off it. You always clam up and get ever so polite when you're bothered about something. Don't start with your sisterly insight. I'm okay, just a bit tired. And I do want to make this a good party. For Ben. You could organise a party for thousands, recovering from flu and rescheduling the Channel Tunnel at the same time without turning a hair. So what's the problem with this one? Nothing. Oh, I see. Ben's a bit down. I, I think he's worried about work. He hasn't said anything. But I get the feeling... Well, that's all. Nothing definite. Nothing worth talking about. OK. I'll shut up. Concentrate on the party. Nice, well-rehearsed surprise with no surprises. What about you, though? Me? Your surprise. Hasn't Ben spoken to you yet, then? My lips are sealed. What is the 15th anniversary? Is it special? Crystal. (laughs) You looked it up? No, I didn't. Rosie did. Oh, well, that's easy, then. Ben will do the correct thing. He'll get you a a rather good piece of fiendishly expensive lead crystal and three dozen red roses. Not one for the outre gesture, Ben, is he? No, I don't mean that. Ignore me. I mean, he's so good about doing the right thing. You make it sound like a crime. 
Envy, pure envy. I think all this secret party idea is lovely. I will bring the kids. Perhaps it'll give them ideas. This was Rosie's idea. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, well, I think it's reassurance she's after. Her friend Natasha, well, two of her friends actually, Natasha and Catherine. Now, Katie's dad ran off. Katie's mum turns to her best friend Barbara, Tasha's mum, for help and support and helps herself to Tasha's dad. And now she's pregnant. Stupid bitch. Yes, so there's a messy, messy divorce. Katie and Natasha aren't speaking and all four parents run the PTA between them. <laughs> knew these PTAs were dens of iniquity. <laughs> no, you're OK as long as you don't invite any of them to your party. Well, that is a bit of a problem already. Oh, not with them, but there are one or two couples where I don't know whether to invite one, both or neither. Well, it does look a bit smug, doesn't it? Come and help us celebrate our lovely marriage. We made it, you didn't. I think Rosie wants a demonstration. She's pretty upset. She's, well, she was very fond of Barbara and Tony. They were enviably lovely parents. Apparently they never rowed. Like you and Ben. Yeah, exactly. And she and Katie and Tasha were a famous threesome. She's, well, she's losing her bearings. Mum, come here, quick. What is it? Can't you come here? I'm busy. No, no, I can't. It's the tent. Oh. Quick, what on earth's the matter? Police department went into operation oh, in Somerset. It's There's the lake, the isn't it? Missing child yes, from the yes, I think so. What's happening? What are they doing? The Dragging. Shh, the scene of frenzied Quiet a minute. As the search has widened for six-year-old Samantha Carnworth, who disappeared from a children's playground in Tamworth in Staffordshire four days ago. Oh, Police God. are dragging a lake in the popular beauty spot of Coombe Barton in Somerset. After children playing near the lake found a rucksack containing the clothes Samantha was known to be wearing when she disappeared. The rucksack, which was hidden among the reeds at the lakeside, also contained a china doll fully dressed in Victorian clothing. It is an expensive doll of the kind more usually found in antique shops than toy shops. Unlike the clothing, the doll did not belong to Samantha. That's the jetty. That's where we parked, just up there if behind the trees. If anyone recognises the doll oh, or can give any it's information gone now. You've about missed the rucksack it. or its contents, could they please contact the police on... How sickening. Where's Rosie? I don't know. In her room. Don't turn that off. I was watching. It's the lake. I want to see if they show any more. Please. Oh, no. If anybody knows anything... Or anybody. If you know anything. If you've got my Sam, please give her back. If you think anybody you know has, please tell the police. It could be your kitty he could do it to next. She's only six years old. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I can't. Turn it off. God, I wish they wouldn't do that. It's obscene. That poor woman. I wonder if they'll find her in the lake. Turns it into some sort of cheap thriller, doesn't it? That doll. It looks a bit like the child. <laughs> I dare you, Ben Wheeler. Walk out to the middle. You're scared. You daren't walk to the middle. If the ice breaks, they'll never find you again. That chap, he has no for half an hour. What are they doing now? Over there, in the reeds. That's where they found the rucksack and the doll. Wish they could have said, oh, sir, or being stuck over here. You can't see anything. Yeah, you were here yesterday, weren't you? Hmm? Well, yesterday? Before the circus hit town. Are you press? No, no, good lord, no. Um, just passing. Are you? Mm, yeah. Local paper. Thought I was on to something yesterday. Then the bloody television gets in on the act. We get booted out. Ah, uh, well, it's that time. They won't find anything now they've found that rucksack. Um, you've been round here quite a bit, though, ain't you? No. Not at all. Looks like they found something. Give me those glasses. We should let us get a bit closer. What do you reckon that is? I've no idea. Uh, I must be going. What is it? Can you see anything? Well, no. Oh, some sort of long, thin parcel.
The dog. Long thin parcel. Get a bit closer. Uh oh. Cow's going into view, Bill. Don't stop. Just drive straight through. I can't. Calm down. They can't get you. <laughs> I don't even want to. Well, why are they going so slowly? I don't like them so close to the van. Because this is their lane. They'll go at their own pace. They're not interested in us. Oh, they're disgusting. I can't bear those spindly legs and those stupid big eyes. <laughs> that shit everywhere. Oh, I can't stand milk anyway. Oh, God! Why is that one looking at us? Haven't you ever seen cows in a country lane before? No, I bloody haven't, and I don't want to again. I thought you were supposed to be at one with nature. Yeah, but I don't have to stand in a field surrounded with cow pats to prove it. And the audiences down here are thicker than cow shit anyway. Look, there's a gap you can get through. Go on! Yes? Oh, uh, what is it, officer? Are you all right, sir? Well, yes, of course. Thank you. Working in this area again, are you, Mr. Wheeler? Yes, uh, I... I... Is anything wrong? No, not at all, sir. I just wondered if you had a reason for sitting here blocking the road. Have you lost your way, perhaps? Uh, no, they, um... <laughs> I had to stop. They were... Bringing the cows in. Yes, they usually do this time of day. But they've all gone now, sir. Yes. I was... I was thinking. Um, a bit sleepy. I see. Perhaps you could remember to pull off the road in future if you want to have a little think, or if you feel sleepy. You hadn't been in your car very long, though, had you, sir? Didn't I see you over by the lake? Uh, briefly, yes. I, I uh, wondered what was going on. Mm -hmm. I've known this place since I was a little boy. I um, often come here with my family. You know, picnics. You know. Well, it's terrible to think... Uh, did you... May one ask, uh, did you uh, find anything? Yes, sir. Oh. A medium-sized bell tent, all neatly folded in its own little waterproof bag, complete with tent pegs and ground sheet. Oh, good heavens. You'll probably be able to see a close-up of it on the news when you get home, sir. Might even catch a glimpse of yourself with all the others... Good afternoon. Hello. You're taking the sign down. Does that mean you don't have any vacancies? Or are you closing down altogether for the end of the season? Um, I'm not exactly sure. Immediately I'm taking the wretched thing down because it was driving me mad with its squeaking. You could oil it. True. If I could remember where I put the oil, or if I could remember to buy some more when I went into town. How far is that? Uh, town? Oh, about 10, 11 miles. Ah. Uh. The thing is, I've just rather disgraced myself. Nearly fell asleep at the wheel. I have business in the area. I, I travel. My name's um, Ben Wheeler. Here's my card. Oh, thank you. I usually like to press on home however late, but I don't really fancy driving back to London tonight. So if you're still taking in guests, um, I was hoping I might find a nice countrified bed and breakfast for the night. I do dislike plastic hotels. I don't blame you, but... It's rather... <clears throat> well, the fact is... Ah, uh, I, you're on your own. Um, you don't want... Oh, no. No, it's not that. My brother lives with me. It's... It's just... Are you working round here? No, uh, I finished my work. Just passing through. I do know the area pretty well, though. I used to stay not far away when I was a kid. My uncle used to work at High Cross Farm. I don't suppose the, the Willoughby's still... Farm there, do they? Oh, yes. 
Ralph Willoughby still farms a few acres. Most of it was sold off when the old man died, though. Good Lord. I remember Ralph as a teenager, racketing around the place in that little MG. Using the lanes as his own private brand's hatch. Well, who was your uncle? Frank Stoney, my mother's brother. He died, um, oh, late 60s. Before my time. Nevertheless, that's made up my mind for me. Yes, I am taking the sign down altogether, and you are my last guest of the season. Come on in and choose your room. I'm Valerie Crefield, by the way. Ah, oh, messages. Good. Contrary to popular mythology, I love answer phones. They're the best way I know of avoiding people. I put mine on as soon as I get up. That way I just speak to the people I really want to. Problem is, you see, I used to be the headmistress of the local school. But they closed down my little kingdom. So I took early retirement, and absolutely everybody thinks I'm just longing to organise everything. Actually, I just want to vegetate. <laughs> Hi, Val. It's Chris. It's uh, oh, quarter to four, and I know you're bloody well there. I'll be back late tonight, and don't wait up. But don't lock the door. My brother. Now, do you want the room with the rising or the setting sun? Do you have a room that looks out towards the lake? Why? Oh, it was one of my favourite places when I was a kid. It used to be called the Devil's Wash Bowl. Still is. I was really scared of it. The local kids always said it was bottomless. Only the daredevils used to skate on it when it was frozen over. And you weren't one of the daredevils? No. I was always the one at the back. The one whose name you can't remember in the school photo. Hmm? Mr Ordinary. Have you been there recently? Oh, um, about a couple of months ago. I was there with my family. We've got two kids, a boy and a girl. You don't know what's going on there at the moment, then? No. What's happening? There did seem to be a fair few people when I drove past. The police are dragging it, looking for a child who disappeared. Oh, God! How appalling! And, and all those people... Yes. I've already had to turn away a couple of ghouls. I'm afraid I should have to ask you to leave if I thought you were that sort of sightseer. Good God, no! I had no idea! Look, I've been on the road. I, I don't know much about this missing child, just what I've heard on the car radio. I've, I've known the lake since I was a boy. It's, uh, it's always been a favourite place. I kind of gravitate to it whenever I'm in the neighbourhood. Look, I wouldn't want you to think that I hate that kind of ghoulishness as much as you do. I'd better go. Um, drive into town and find a hotel. No. No, of course you mustn't. I'm sorry. But it was rather awful. What kind of person is it who goes along to gawp as a sort of holiday treat? This is a very quiet little spot. And having taught that age group... Well... I don't even think they were from the papers. Oh, so that's why there was a policeman in the lane when I nodded off. I wondered what terrible crime I'd committed when he had tapped on my window. Yes, they'd been round here asking me if I'd seen anything. But I'm afraid I spend very little of my time gazing out of the window. Would you like to come up and I'll show you your room? Now I rather wish I had spent some time being a bit nosy. I wonder if they'll find her. I imagine so. These stories never seem to have a happy ending anymore. What a beautiful room. I like it. It catches all the evening sun. And a wonderful view. You can see the lake. Oh, yes. Well, I don't suppose I shall want to. Well, all this makes it a very different place. Yes. But they haven't found anything yet. In the water, I mean. Well, actually, they found a tent, uh, according to the policeman in the lane. Well, there certainly haven't been any campers near the lake for weeks, so I doubt if that's relevant. Now, I take it you'd like an evening meal here? Or, or do you want to drive off and find a restaurant? Oh, no, I'd rather eat here. Thank you. Seven o'clock suits you? I was planning a mushroom risotto. Sounds just the job. Oh, may I use the phone? I ought to let my wife know what I'm doing. Hello? Oh, hi, Dad. She's in the bath. Do you want me to get her? OK, right. I'll tell her. When will you be back? Don't forget the concert. Mum won't be at bath for hours. She's only just got in. She's taken the radio with her. Right. 
Are you in a hotel or a phone box? Oh, well, give me the number. Then Mum can ring you when she's out of the bath. Hang on, let me get a pencil. Yeah, that's the code. Right, two nine three. Okay, I'll tell her. Night, Dad. See you tomorrow. Yeah, I will. Okay, bye. You cried the whole night through. Well, you can cry. Come in. Mr. Wheeler, it's quarter past seven. Supper's ready if you are. Thank you. Is everything all right? The bulb hasn't gone, has it? No, I haven't switched the light on. I've just been watching the sun go down. There was a rainbow earlier, dipping into the lake. It's good to see real darkness, with stars. Not that orange glare. There's still a light over by the lake. Yes, just the one. The rest went a while ago. Well, they can hardly carry on searching in the dark. But it can't be as dark as it is at the bottom of the lake. It really is a sinister place now. I just thought it was when we were kids. I've always known it was frightening as well as beautiful. <laughs> I'm a very ordinary bloke. I don't get fanciful ideas. I was never any good at English at school. <laughs> I remember I wrote a long composition once, all about the lake, how it kept calling me. <laughs> she was a tough old bird, my teacher. She said to me, "Ben, this is excellent, full of imagination, which is not usually your strong point." <laughs> she was dead right. Oh, I'm sorry. You said supper was ready. Um, is the dinner spoiling while I'm wandering on up here? No, not yet. But it won't last forever. I'd better put the light on. I'm、oh, sorry. It was very boring of me. I don't know why people go on like that just because the lights are switched off. Well, me anyway. The darkness of the confessional. I'm talking to strangers, of course. Not confessional. Yes. Chris and I have lived here together since his wife died. Eight years. We never talk about anything; just trivialities.、Um, have you had your supper? No, I usually grab something in the kitchen after I've fed my guests. Well, would you? <laughs> But perhaps the last thing you want is to eat with your guests. Well, it is usually. But yes, I'd love to eat my own risotto with you instead of standing up in the kitchen eating it with a spoon. <laughs> Thank you. Well, come on then. The dining room's down here. I might even dig out a bottle of wine. Local, of course. That'll have to do. It's not going to get any better. Sounds fine to me. Yeah. Well, it always sounds better when I'm on my own. You very nervous? Yes, of course I am. What a stupid question. Sorry. You always seem so calm. I could never do that. No. Your mum didn't send you to music lessons when you were minus one, did she? Sorry. It makes it worse. Everybody saying how brilliant I am. There's loads of people just sitting there waiting for me to bog it all up. They'd really like that. <laughs> Oh hi, Dad. I'm just going to get ready. See you in a minute. Hello, Poppet. Hello, love. Ben, thank goodness you cut it a bit fine, darling. You haven't forgotten Rosie's concert. Of course not. I thought you'd have got back this afternoon. But I told you I might be late. Well, I told Rosie when you were in the bath.、Oh. I half expected you to ring me back. In fact, I gave Rosie the number. Didn't she tell you? No, good old Rosie. Oh well. I didn't think I was going to make it. The traffic was appalling. Now we've got to go straight out again, haven't we? Oh, the last thing I want to do is sit on one of those ghastly chairs and listen to a load of kids failing to make music. Don't you dare say that in front of Rosie. Oh, come on, Isabel. What do you take me for? She's terribly nervous. Yes, of course she is. So she should be. What do you mean? I mean you can't create anything without nerves. In her case, she's not particularly good. Ben, what are you talking about? That's a ridiculous thing to say. And it's not true. She's only thirteen. She's got a distinction at grade six. No, she's correct enough. She's just not very musical. No, Ben. I'm sorry. I, d- I don't know what right you think you have to say things like that. I did make a precarious living myself as a musician, long ago. Oh, jazz! Oh well, that's, that's not, not proper music.、Hmm? It's not the same. I don't know anything about it. No, I mean it's no, you don't. 
But I do. I know enough to know that my daughter, while technically perfectly competent, hasn't got an ounce of music in her. I don't believe this. You're not trying to tell me that music means anything to you. You never play. You don't even listen. You can't play my kind of jazz on your own. I was more interested in making music than listening to other people. OK, go and get Rosie. <laughs> I'll be a very good daddy. I'll applaud like mad and act all proud and modest when they tell me how brilliant she is. I don't want you to act anything. I don't know what, what possible reason... Are you, are you jealous of Rosie? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, Izzy. I shouldn't have said any of that. Don't take any notice. I've got the most appalling head. It, it's the headache talking, not me. We ought to be going, if we're going. Just leave me a minute to recover. Hmm? I'm sorry. Please believe me. I am sorry. Forget what I said. I didn't mean it. I'll uh, go and see what Rosie's doing. When I became a man, I put away childish things. You ready, then? You want me to drive, Ben? Ben, what's the matter? You know, darling, is this just a headache? Or are you, do, you, do you feel really ill? I'm fine. You don't look it. You look as if your eyes are watering. Are we going? I'm going to be late. Dad, can I have my clarinet, please? You shouldn't leave it lying about. You'll break the reed. It was only for a minute. It only takes a minute. Have you been mucking about with it? You can't play this. No, I can't. But I used to play the alto sax. Mr Raghu says the saxophone is an abomination that maketh desolate. And who the hell is Mr Radcliffe? <sighs> my clarinet teacher. Oh... So I'm not only paying an arm and leg for this musical illiterate to fail to teach you how to look after your instrument properly, he's fatally corrupting your musical taste as well. Come hmm? on, let's get going. We don't want to be late. I'll drive. Ready, Rosie? Yes, for the last hour. Now, for God's sake, don't fuss, Isabel. I'll drive. We're not going to be late. I just need don't a minute. Don't enter in the car, Rosie. It won't be long. It's quicker by bus. Ben, what is the matter? Please. Nothing's the matter. I have a headache from driving in foul traffic, which is beginning to you go... You don't usually cry when you have a headache. No. Ben, don't shut me out. It's not work, is it? Work? They're not making you redundant, are they? No. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> what makes you think that? <laughs> have you been worrying? A bit. Of course, nobody's safe these days. But I don't think there's any immediate threat. But you've been worrying about it. No. Sorry, darling, I haven't. Why do you think I have? Oh, pressure? Tension? You don't get many headaches. You usually can't wait to get back home as quickly as possible. You don't usually dismiss Rosie's efforts so bitterly. Snap at me. Isabel, I said I was sorry. I made a passing comment on Rosie's playing and you turned me into some kind of monster who has to be humoured, hmm? I am not the slightest bit pressured about my job or anything. <laughs> Do you really want to know why I was crying? Get ready to laugh. <laughs> Music often makes... made me cry. Oh, I know you don't count jazz. Just say I was temporarily unhinged, hmm? I picked up Rosie's clarinet to put it away and... I remembered a tune... I haven't played a note for 17 years. It used to matter. Obviously, somewhere, somehow, it still does. Not just a teenage fad I grew out of, like long hair and jeans. If you must know, I find it excruciating to have to sit in that hall and listen to all those carefully drilled, nice middle-class kids jumping through their musical hoops. Then you'd better not come. I'll tell Rosie you've got a headache. Of course I'm bloody well coming. Let's just say I'm a pathetic middle-aged man moping over his lost youth, hmm? That's allowable, isn't it? I can't answer that. If I say yes, you'll accuse me of humouring you. And it's not truthful to say no. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Look, I can't keep saying I'm sorry. 
I love you, Isabel. And Tom. And Rosie. And her bloody clarinet. We'd better go before she drives off on her own. Is it all right, then? Yes. Yes, of course it is. I shall have to be off early in the morning. I'll probably leave about six. Oh. Afraid I shall be away for a few days. Oh. I've still got things to do. I only came back for the concert. I see. Which I would not have missed. No. No, I know. I'll probably leave before you're awake. I'll phone you when I get there. Where will that be? Oh, someplace the other side of Norwich. Will you be back for Saturday? Yes, I should think so. Why? Oh, nothing. Well, I'll probably be back on Friday night. Good. Rice knows. Well, don't just stand there. Go and get a bag. Um, uh, uh, okay, folks, uh, we'll take a break there. Uh, we'll be back on the stand in 20 minutes and we'll be playing some more of the numbers we know you're looking forward to hearing. <clears throat> I'm going to strangle that little cow one of these days. Not if I get to her first, you're not. Well, go on then, Ben. She's your problem. Go and get her back or this lot will turn ugly. And they haven't paid us yet. What am I supposed to do? She won't come back. She's been spoiling for this all day. So what do you suggest? Who would we go on without her? You take over on keyboard and we scrap the bass. No, that won't work. Not with Jamie. OK, then we just carry on without her and see where we go. Probably interesting. You mean you're scared of her? I'll go and see what she's up to. Grab this. you're doing under there off. no look moonstone love please well, come out come out and talk to me tell me what's wrong please no you'll hurt yourself you'll get covered in oil anyway it's dangerous suppose somebody tries to move the van look come on out and talk to me about it hmm? what's the matter you can't just run off like that we were going really well you were fantastic is it me? Is it something I've done? Well, don't, don't you feel well? <laughs> All right, I know. I sound bloody stupid. I can't play. You're wasting your talent playing with a bunch of no-hopers like us. But we have driven 150 miles to be here. We're getting paid properly. The place is packed to the doors because there are enough people around here who like the sound we make. So what are, you, what are you doing lying under the sodding van in the sodding car park? You can't just run off and leave, leave us all in the shit. I just did. Yes, I know. And now you can just come back. Rick can say you felt faint or something and everybody will think you're wonderful. We can't just stop like that. We've only been playing a quarter of an hour. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you just say what you're really thinking? If only. Are you going to appeal to my better nature? If I thought you had one. My community one... spirit, my commitment. We mustn't let all these wonderful people down, must we? I used to be a girl guide, you know. I promise at all times to do my best. And I went to Sunday school. Well, Jesus wouldn't want me to be spiteful, would he? Jesus wants me for a sunbeam to shine for him each day. Shut up! Oh, shut up yourself! I suppose you know how ridiculous you sound twittering on like that. Well, not as bloody ridiculous as you lying flat on your back under a clapped out van singing sodding hymns. In every way try to please him at home, at school, at play. A sunbeam, a sunbeam. Jesus wants Will to you a shut sunbeam, up and come out? A sunbeam, a sunbeam. I'll be a sunbeam for him. No! Oh, no! Don't you try that on. Let go my arm. No! Come on out! You're hurting me! Good! Stop it! Did you hear me? Can you hear this? For Christ's sake, what's going on? We can see, can't you? Let go of her! No! You help me pull her out! Pull her out and she'll bring that bloody exhaust with her! All right. What do you suggest? I don't know. Get in the van and drive away. Leave her lying there. 
All right. Don't be stupid. I didn't mean it. Joke. I suppose you realise they can hear all this in there. The bloody little cow! Shut up! Look, don't you start. We've got enough with one prima donna. Yep. Satisfied. Right. Now what? I said, now what? We all go back in there and smile nicely and carry on playing. Then we take the money and run. We get into the van and we vanish. And then we have a serious talk about our future. <sighs> what future? Exactly. Our future, you little bitch! Our future! <laughs> Don't you dare ever forget <laughs> my sakes! <laughs> Stop it, you bloody idiot! What do you think you're doing? Trying to kill her? Yes. I probably think I do. Well, wait till later, will you? Are you coming back in? Yes. And I say you felt faint, but you're okay now, and I'll call for a big hand for the brave little girl, and everybody will think you're brilliant. Oh, pregnant. Oh, Christ, you're not, are you? No, don't flatter yourself. Your pathetic fumbling couldn't impregnate an amoeba. That's what's supposed to be wrong with women, though, isn't it? If they stray out of line, feel dizzy, feel faint, throwing up. Got this green and yellow rash. Must be pregnant or got the curse. Oh, poor thing. Let's all be loveling and understanding and beat her up. Why did you run off then? Because I couldn't stand the noise we were making any longer. It was all wrong. It wasn't what was in my head. You were fouling it up. It was beautiful in here. And when I looked up and saw your ugly, sweaty faces and all those morons out front, and Ben with that cretinous look on his face and that god-awful sound that we were Correct me it. if I'm wrong, but there are four of us. We're not your invention. Oh, no! You'd be different if I'd invented you. I don't want to talk about it. Come on, I'm going in. Don't any of you talk to me or look at me. I don't want to ruin... I don't... Oh. Well, you heard what the lady said. Ben? What? You coming back? You know, I think that girl is seriously mad. My hand's bleeding. You shouldn't go beating up vans. Do you really think she's mad? <laughs> what other explanation is there? Doesn't drink, no drugs, no red meat, doesn't even eat, so as you'd notice. Freaks out on bean sprouts and holy water. She's a selfish, destructive little bitch. That's what's the matter with her. And a better musician than any of us. Oh, sure. But I don't have to live with it. I'll settle for a quiet life, playing nice, cool music with a few human beings, instead of a, 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 a screaming neurotic. Yeah, me too. Count me out after Southampton. No, you can't break up the group. It's nearly four years. It's not me, mate. It's already in pieces, and your little lady's done it all on her own. <laughs> Hello, 293, Valerie Crefield. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, he's just walked through the door. For you, your wife. Isabel? Hello, darling. I wasn't expecting... Is anything the matter? No, no, everything's fine. Just thought I'd give you a ring, as I was fast asleep when you left. And I don't like it when you go driving off to the ends of the earth when we've, oh, I don't know, had a disagreement, even a little one like... Yeah, you'll be back soon, won't you? But drive carefully. No, I'm all right. I'm just, just a bit depressed. Oh, the weather, the news. Did you see they found a body in the lake? They, they haven't said. Oh, that poor woman. Makes it worse somehow, knowing the place. By the way, darling, did you say you were going to Norwich, or did I imagine it? With this number? It was written down on the pad. Well, I assumed you'd... Oh, it must be Rosie. Looks like you're writing. But... <laughs> this this isn't a Norwich number. What is this code? Ben, where are you? Ben? Ben? Sorry, darling. You, you'll have to speak up. There's the most awful crackling on the line. What? What did you say? Oh, no. <sighs> Mrs. Crefield, I've been cut off. I think there's a fault on the line. I can't seem to get reconnected. Ruth, hello. I had 
to come round to the back. I don't think I'd have got this through the front door. Tom and Rosie asked me to collect it. I don't think they realised how vast it was going to be. <laughs> Et voilà! Your anniversary cake. <laughs> well, maybe the pink and gold is a little over the top, but I wouldn't have said it was a crying matter. <laughs> Now, you'll have to tell me what I'm to do with it. If you tell me to take it home with me till tomorrow, I shall cry. Izzy? Hello? Where are you? Did you hear on the news? They found that little girl. Her body. They haven't said yet that it's definitely her, but it must be. I can't stop thinking about it. They found her. She was in the lake. Oh, Izzy, you mustn't keep brooding about it. I know it seems worse when it's a place you know, but it isn't really. No, no, I know. Is that what's making you cry? <laughs> Not the, uh, the Joan Collins among cakes? <laughs> no, the cake's lovely. It's so sweet of them. We must hide it from Ben. Is he back yet? Ben, um, he, he's getting back later this evening. Where is he? Norwich, uh, somewhere the other side of Norwich, he, he said. He left, um, I've got the number here. I was just, um, I was just looking through the codes, trying to find the name. Sorry, Mr. Wheeler. This bus closed. No one's allowed any further. Oh, I see. I was just out for a stroll. In your car, sir? No, I was just going to wander down. Why is it closed off? Do you watch television? No, hardly ever. They get much chance, my job. Ah, then you wouldn't know that we have recovered a body from the lake, then, would you, sir? No. I didn't know. Who, Whose body is it? Do you know? I'm afraid I'm not at liberty to say. I believe the information has been given at a press conference. May possibly have been given already. Hello. This is Orchard House. I'm afraid that neither Valerie nor Christopher is available at the moment. But if you would like to leave your name and message, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Please speak after the tone. Hello, this is Isabel Wheeler. My husband, um, Mr. Ben Wheeler, is staying there, I believe, and we were cut off in the middle of a call. Could he please ring me? Um, yeah, uh, thank you. in them woods. You're scared. The other side. Where the devil lives. The devil lives in them woods. He comes down to wash his face in his washbowl. You're scared of the devil. Scared of the devil. <laughs> Go on. I dare you, Ben. Walk out to the middle. Walk out to the middle. If the ice breaks, they'll never find you again.
Where do you want this shopping? Hello, Chris. That was quick. I hope you got everything. Please speak after the tone. Leave it, Chris. That's the fourth time it's done that. Well, why don't you pick it up, then? Honestly, Val, you are an idiot. I think it's Mrs Wheeler, phoning for her husband. Then why don't you answer it and call him down? He's gone out. Can you bring that through to the kitchen for me, please? Mm. All the more reason for you to take a message. You know, you really irritate me with that bloody phone. You don't live in the 20th century, do you? And why don't you just send messages in a forked stick? <laughs> It'll be cheaper. Oh, shut up, Chris. Look, put that in the freezer, will you? There's something weird going on, and I don't like it. The only weird thing round here is you. Mr Wheeler's behaving very oddly. His wife phoned him about an hour ago. They were on the phone for quite a while. I was in the kitchen, but I went into the hall, and he... I saw him deliberately cut her off. And then he made a great thing to me about not being able to get through, said there was a fault on the line, but there wasn't. Then he suddenly said he had to go out. He asked me, insisted really, to put the answer phone on and not to answer it if it was his wife. And then he dashed off in his car. And? Well, there's been one message from her and three, no, four calls where no one said anything. So? I'm sure it's her. Well, pick up the phone and find out then. I don't want to get involved. Very wise. Doesn't it occur to you that your Mr Wheeler may be in the process of walking out on Mrs W? Doing a runner? I hadn't thought of that. Oh, I do hope it is just that. Just that? Well, you're, you're giving shelter to this guy who's dumping his wife and you'd be relieved if that's all he's done. Well, what else do you think he's up to? I don't know. He seems such a nice man. Well, he did the first time he stayed, but why has he come back? He's very jumpy. I, I don't like it. Well, you shouldn't go lending rooms to nice men on impulse. Are you scared of him? Do you think he goes around chopping up lonely widows? No, don't be silly. Anyway, I've got you. Oh, don't bank on it. The slightest sniff of a homicidal maniac and I'll be running to you for protection. He seems obsessed with the lake. You know they found a body? Yes. But they said yet who it is. Oh, I don't know. But, but the local gossip is that it is a, a little body. Poor child. He came here the day they started dragging the lake and then came back the day they found the body. Yeah, he's probably a reporter. Hey, perhaps it's not his wife at all, it's his editor. And he didn't want you to catch on. No, I'm sure he's not. Why? I just know. No, that's not why he's here. Why do you think nice Mr Wheeler is returning to the scene of the crime? I don't know. I hate being so suspicious, but I can't get rid of the thought now it's happened. Look, if you've got anything to go on, you ought to go to the police. I haven't. Only the phone call and... 30 years of amateur psychology. Only this isn't just a question of knowing which kids let off the stink bomb, is it? Don't be patronising. Now, I've got this maggot in my brain. I keep thinking of other coincidences. He's a traveller. It said in the paper that she went off in a big blue car. He has a blue car. And so have I. And thousands of other people. I know. There's a heart-rending photograph in the paper of the little girl. A school photograph. Gap-toothed, sharp focus, every freckle, and a big production line smile. Of course I want them to catch whoever murdered her, and I want him punished. But you don't want to get involved? No. And I'm thoroughly ashamed of myself. I don't want to be one of those interfering, gossipy old women who gather like vultures. Why don't you take a look through his things well, while you're tidying his room? Well, you might come across something that would make your mind up for you one way or the other. Oh, I couldn't. I'm sorry, I just couldn't. Why not? Well, supposing it was him, what if he does it again? I've got nothing to go on. Nothing I could go to the police with. Right, go and have a look in his room. 
If you don't find anything, you can put everything back where it was and pretend you haven't touched it. I'd like to bet you'll find a reporter's notebook and a Fleet Street phone number. That would be a relief. And if you find anything suspicious, you can go to the cops with a clear conscience. And if he is from the papers? Well, you can chuck him out. Well, I'll go and have a look. Give me a shout if he comes back. Oh, Chris. Look, I live here as well. I want to know what we've got staying with us. Are you going to give me a hand? Oh, all right. Just don't let him catch me. Izzy, you've got to make a decision. It's a quarter to ten. What do you want to do? What can I do? He's not coming back. Is that just tonight, or...? I don't know. He phoned at midnight last night. I was expecting him back about six. I was frantic. He just said he, he, he couldn't come back. Yet. And put the phone down. And when I phoned back, I got the answer phone. Well, he said he was going to Norwich. But he's not. He, he's somewhere in Somerset. Is this a hotel he's staying at? No. I don't know. Um, Orchard House. I think I may know where it is. A woman answered the first time I rang. Valerie something. Did Ben leave you the number? No. Yes, yes, he gave it to Rosie. Well, if he gave the number to Rosie, it's hardly likely to be the... To be what? Well, but he wouldn't give Rosie her number, would he? Not Ben. No. no I'm sure it's not another woman. What, then? I don't know. Perhaps he's having a breakdown. But he's, he's not coming back today, and perhaps not... What am I going to say to Tom and Rosie? Perhaps it's some sort of surprise he's planning for the party. I don't think the party, our wedding anniversary, the children or anything to do with us has crossed his mind. You're not worried about him, are you? You're frightened. Oh, don't be silly. I do know when you're hiding something, Izzy. Honestly, Ruth, the one thing on my mind is, is how I can sort things out for Tom and Rosie and the damn party. OK, if that's the way you want it. Now, the party. We either tell a convincing lie about Ben and go on with it or tell the same lie and cancel. What do you think you can cope with? At the moment, I don't think I can cope with anything. You've bloody well got to! If you just sit here in your dressing gown and do nothing, it might turn out to be the most dramatic wedding anniversary party ever. But I don't think it's what you'd want. Or Tom, or Rosie. OK, OK, I'm half of this bloody marriage. I'll stand in for Ben. We'll have a lovely big party and everyone can feel really sorry for me. What do we tell them about Ben? I can phone everybody and tell them that he's he's had a little accident. Nothing serious, but they're keeping him in for observation. He's conscious, and he's also insistent that the party goes ahead. OK? Brilliant. Eleven years with Jack have made me an accomplished liar. What hospital is Ben in? Pit Lottery. Oh, I don't know. We'll have to improvise. It'll be OK for you to be a bit distraught. I'll tell everybody to act natural and not pester you with questions. Then I'll drive you to this Valerie place tomorrow when we can see what's going on. No. I want him to come back of his own accord, if he's going to. I absolutely hate this, Chris. What's that you've got there? Well, not much. If he is pressed, there's nothing. Well, this is a sort of travelling diary. Appointments, mileage, addresses and so on. He's been all over the place in the last six weeks, including the Midlands. Well, that doesn't prove anything, does it? He told me himself. He, he's a salesman. Today's date just says Norwich, and there's nothing about his last visit here either. No, Chris, don't. Yes, Val. Oh, hello, 293. Christopher Wardle. Oh, hello. Uh, yes, that's right. He is. Well, he has been staying here. I'm afraid he went out some time ago. And no, he didn't give any indication when he'd be back. Y yes, of course. I'll tell him as, as soon as he comes in. No, this is a private house. That's bed and breakfast. <laughs> no. No, this is Coombe Barton. Somerset. Oh, no, just leave it, Ruth. I'm not clearing anything tonight. Do you want me to stay? No, no, you go home. 
Oh, it was rather a good party, wasn't it? You were terrific. Well, I'm setting a new trend, wedding anniversary parties without the husband. More in keeping with the times. Except that nobody quite believed it about Ben, did they? Especially when I couldn't come up with the name of a hospital for him. Or even a county. Well, if Ben hasn't got a broken ankle, two cracked ribs and mild concussion now, he will have by the time I catch up with him. <laughs> Rosie didn't believe any of it, did she? If you're not doing anything else tonight, you ought to go to bed. Shall I see you up? No, it's all right. I'll be OK. You are good, Ruth. But I think I'd like to be on my own. Oh, don't worry. Shan't do anything silly. You know me. Good old sensible coping Isabel, married to that nice Mr. Reliability himself. Oh, love it. Oh, please go, Ruth. I'll phone you tomorrow, OK? Phone me later if you need to. Good night, Izzy. Night. Thanks. Ruth? Is that you? You've forgotten something. Ruth? No. It's me. I'm sorry, Isabel. What are you doing here? I've come home. You're covered in mud. You're soaked. I've been out in the garden, waiting till they all went. All those people. How did you get so wet? It's not raining. I... I can't explain. Where have you been? It was impossible to get back any sooner. I had to think things over. You do know what has been going on here. Yes, I remembered. That's why I had to get back. I had a long drive, the lake. Um, I, I got these for you, sorry. They're not up to much. We, we, can, we can go out and get a nice present tomorrow. You bastard! Can't you think of any more ways to humiliate me? Look at that cake! What's left of it? Tom and Rosie bought that for us. They paid for it themselves. They chose the message. Fifteen happy years, Mum and Dad, in pink and gold, and you couldn't get here. Why have you bothered to come back? You knew what we were planning. If you just... If you'd seen Rosie. And then you walk in with a cheap bunch of flowers you bought at a petrol station. If you hate us all so much, what are you here for now, to gloat? That's what I think of your flowers and you to go and get out! Get out! Right, let's smash the lock, shall we? We might as well! No, no, stop! Stop! I've got to talk to you. Let you, me... you mustn't make scenes, go. Isabel. Leave me alone, please. Let go of my wrist! Thank you. Don't ever maul me again like that. You must despise us quite a lot to do this to us. It would have been kinder to... Had you been planning this for long, or was it a spur-of-the-moment decision? Isabel, darling, I'm sorry. Believe me. It had to be something terrible to make me do this. I, I couldn't face any of you. I was going to disappear, just walk away from you all, leave you in peace. But I couldn't. I had to come back and tell no! you... No! I don't want to hear. I've got to tell you. And then you can decide. Oh, God, you don't have to tell me, I know. You can't know. Don't be a fool. It's obvious. It's what I've been terrified of ever since I knew they were dragging the lake. Then you lie to me. You tell me you're in Norwich. You treat us like dirt. Do you think I haven't noticed you've become a different man? What... What do you think I've done? Oh, Ben, don't go on, please. It's been in all the papers. Here. Look. Inside as well. Page five. I've been going over every detail. I know it by heart. Search widens for six-year-old cement. No. Isabel, no. You, you can't believe I had anything to do with this. Where have you been? Why do you keep going back? Do you think I don't know where they found the body, Ben? 
Ben, how could you do oh, it? Ben, be quiet. <laughs> you're, you're hysterical. You, you can't believe that I could ever hurt a child. This is me, Isabel. For God's sake, you've been married to me for 15 years. You know me better than that. Don't touch me. Keep away. You're afraid of me. I don't know who you are anymore. Please go away. Please. I won't tell anybody what you've done. Just disappear. Keep away from us all. I'll keep quiet. And tell Rosie and Tom... Isabel, I'll... please. I have not killed, not touched that child. Look, I, I know it's my fault not telling you what was going on, lying to you, wrecking the party. Yes, I've done all that. But I have not... Do you, do you know me so little that you could believe that? What else was I to think? But you know me! Do I? Oh, do I really? I am not just a hysterical woman whose party's been ruined. You have changed absolutely since that little... I didn't know what to think. And then I found and found out where it was you were staying. I didn't want to believe it. I don't even want to think it, but... Why did you keep going back? Telling me you were in Norwich, you were in the Midlands, the car is blue. When someone who has who has always been predictable <laughs> starts to behave the way you have these last weeks, look at you now, shaking me, hitting me, soaking wet, covered in mud. You look crazed. Yes. I think I probably am. I've been out of my mind for weeks now. But it's nothing to do with that poor baby in the paper. I can't... I can't bear the thought that you believe that I could ever hurt a child. Come and sit down, please. I have got something terrible to tell you that I should have told you years ago. But I thought that I would lose you. Will you let me tell you now? Sit over there. Don't sit close. It goes back a long way. I didn't do much work at college. I was... There were four of us. We spent every waking moment playing, making music. No, I, I know you don't think jazz is music, do you? Well, we did. Rick, Jamie, Leslie and I. Leslie was a girl, a brilliant musician. She left us way behind, really. We were all good, but she was the genius in the band. She took us places we couldn't even imagine. Sometimes it was magical. In real life, she was a bit ordinary, well, stupid, really, a bit of a phony, but destructive, frightening temper. She called herself Moonstone, just Moonstone. Ben Wheeler... Jamie Fitton, Rick Collins, and Moonstone. Well, it was the 60s. A lot of people called themselves silly names. But not you. No. I saved all my imagination for the band. Oh, God, that's pompous. I wouldn't have said that then. I lived for music. When we left college, we went on the road. We didn't do too badly. We were beginning to make a name... Well, Moonstone was. It was obvious she wasn't going to stay with us for very long. Every time something upset her, which happened about five times a day, she'd threaten to go, leave us to it. We'd get back to the van and find another note. I have gone for good this time. Don't try to find me. I can't take any more of the shit you call music. <laughs> Jamie used to stick them up in the cab to annoy her. Did she go? Oh, every other day. I was... I always went to find her. I was in love with her. Or in love with her music, I don't know. We were on the road in Wiltshire. Not romantic Wiltshire. Swindon. She was being nicer than usual. And we decided we would get married. Married? But then... Oh, no, not, not, not properly. <laughs> that was far too conformist. We made up our own ceremony. We went to Stonehenge. You could still get close to it then. And we exchanged vows at full moon. It wasn't Midsummer Eve, it was, oh, April sometime, 1969. 
I was 23. We mingled our blood. Something else you could do in those days, and exchanged great ugly iron rings, Celtic. We had our names engraved on them. She insisted I put Benjamin. Moonstone and Benjamin. If it wasn't a mystical name, at least it was biblical. And we made solemn vows to love each other forever. And then we tasted each other's blood and sat leaning against the stones, waiting for the dawn. We thought it was far more binding than any dreary legal ceremony. Our own unique marriage. Moonstone beneath the moon. And are you still... Where is she now? I suppose we all thought it would tie her into the group more tightly. It didn't. She was worse than ever. She seemed to hate me. She took to running out on us in the middle of a gig. <laughs> then one night... We'd really made it big. Town hall, audience of hundreds, money, local TV. She refused even to go on. She locked herself in the van and wouldn't come out. All three of us pleading. I had to go and tell everybody it was all off. They didn't want us without her. I suppose I said some rubbish or, or she was ill. Anyway, everybody went home. Bad temper all around. Rick and Jamie Wendy got smashed out of their minds. What did you do? And, I hid and watched the van. I knew she'd have to come out sometime, if only to pee. I waited about an hour. She was very surprised when I caught up with her. The van was in the car park. It was completely deserted. We had a terrible screaming match, and I told her what I thought of her. We had a fight. She kicked me, punched, scratched, bit me... I killed her. Oh, my God. I didn't mean to. I don't think I meant to. I punched her hard. And she fell against one of those big round concrete tubs full of daffodils or pansies. There's a whole line of them separating the car park from the road. What happened? Well, I wanted to leave her there. But I knew I couldn't. They'd know it was me. I didn't mean to do it. I understand exactly what people mean when they say they're beside themselves with rage. I was beside myself, watching. She wasn't very big. I put her into a couple of rubbish sacks in the van, oh. one each end. I drove her to the lake. It was the only place I could think of where I could lose her. Made a better parcel of her there. Waited it down. There was even an old rotting rowing boat tied up to the jetty. No oars. I, I paddled it by hand out to the middle where it's bottomless and heaved her over the side. Oh, God. After a few days, we reported her missing to the local police, but they weren't very interested. Not when Jamie showed them all the notes. Well, she'd threatened so often, you see. There was no suggestion of foul play. Nothing to link her with the blood on the concrete tub, even if anybody noticed it. And what? Well, spit up. Drifted. I don't know where Rick and Jamie went or what they did. I gave up everything that could remind me. It was like cutting out my tongue. But I, I couldn't risk... I had to bury everything that was part of that life. Punish myself. So I did. I gave up music, got a proper job... Then I met you. Why didn't you tell me? Because it was buried. I wasn't any more the madman who killed her. I was, I was afraid that you wouldn't understand. I was another person. Don't touch me. Why did you keep taking me and Tom and Rosie to that place? I don't know. I had to. It's always haunted me, even before... Then, when I found out they were dragging the lake, I knew it was only a matter of time. You know they found her body. She's still wearing my ring. When I dropped her into the lake, I threw my ring as far as I could into the water. And then I remembered I hadn't taken her ring off. It will still be in the records that we reported her missing all those years ago. Eventually, they'll find their way to me. 
It's not her they've found, it's the child. The little girl in the paper and on the television who's been missing for three weeks. Don't you understand? It's the child. You thought I'd killed the child? They've gone. They've taken the body away. All the divers, the police, everybody, they've gone. There was a press conference. They've identified the body. <laughs> so it was all for nothing. I needn't have bothered. I don't know what you're saying. What was for nothing? Killing her? When I found they were dragging the lake, I knew they would find her. I needed to be there to put things right. What did you intend to do? Step forward and shout, I know who she is. Rubbing herself up in dustbin bags and jumping into the lake was an exotic, hippie kind of suicide. We all tried it. Isabel, don't be angry. I didn't know what I was going to do. But it was you I was thinking of. This is my life here. Why didn't you tell me? We were supposed to love each other. Did you think I wasn't fit to be told something as important as this? Those weeks with the others were something taken out of time. That one act, hitting her, took less than a minute. A few seconds out of 48 years. That can't be reality. The years with you and the children, that's what I really am. Not that mad, maddened moment all those years ago. How can anything be real based on that kind of a lie? I don't know who you are. Everything I thought I believed in is, is based on a great, empty nothing. I feel that I'm the one who's drowning. In the black water. Under the ice. How could you keep taking us to that place? Knowing what was there. How could you lie in bed beside me knowing that I didn't know the most important thing about you? When I met you, a serious, over-serious young man, I thought you were incapable of anger. You even lied about your music, the thing you loved best. Oh, yes, you played a bit of jazz at college and for a while after, but you made it sound like a, a passing fad, like, like skateboarding. You couldn't even tell me about that. You Stupid woman! You still don't understand. It wasn't just something I did to pass the time. Earn a living. It was me. I couldn't go on living with all that wildness after what I'd done to Moonstone. My life stopped when I was 24, and I started again. And my second life has been longer and more important than the first. And you won't see that. I didn't lie to you. Can't you understand? This is the man you married, not the boy. And it was a cruel accident that they began to look for the body. They were looking for the child. <laughs> you thought that I was capable of killing a child? You killed her. And you've killed us. Me. Now let me pass, I need to go. No! You must understand. <laughs> Listen to me! Be quiet, Isabel. Stop crying. Do you hear me? Let go of me! Oh, my God, are you trying to do it again? I haven't changed, Isabel. I haven't changed. Happy anniversary. Fifteen wonderful years. That was yesterday. Can you let me pass, please? Thank you. It's beginning to get light. Grey dawn. What are you going to do? Go back to collect my things. To see if... What about you? I don't know what I think or feel. I just... I just know I can't live with a lie. You didn't change. You just deceived yourself and everybody else. I think I, I would have loved you, stayed with you then, if you told me. Will you come back to the lake with me now? No. And afterwards? I don't know. Oh, Mr Wheeler, I was I've just... come for my belongings, those that weren't lodged with the police. I presume it was you who informed against me, gave the police my logbook? Yes, it was. I'm not proud of what we... Of, 
Well, and I, I am not remotely interested in your soul-searching, Mrs. Crayfield. No. May I just say that I'm very glad that there's no suspicion attached to you, that I was wrong. I ought to thank you. The police shared your suspicions, but it was my logbook that saved me. As you remarked, I am a very orderly person. My entire travelling life is in that little book. You failed to notice that on that day that the poor child was abducted, I was involved in a little accident. My windscreen shattered, and the methodical young man who came out to replace it noted the exact time and location in his little logbook. So, regretfully, the police had to let me go. Like you, they realised that I am the kind of bastard who tortures, rapes and murders little girls. I didn't want to believe my suspicions. But once I began to think the way I did, I was impelled to act. Every inch the village school, ma'am. Tell the truth and shame the devil. If you like. And what I did didn't harm you, as you were innocent. Innocent. I suppose you know they're holding the child's stepfather. Let us hope they have the right person. I expect they have. They gave me a severe ticking off for behaving so suspiciously. <laughs> it's a good job there are public-spirited snoopers like you around. And what are you, then? One of the ghouls haunting the lake? No, I don't haunt the lake. It haunts me. The devil's washbowl. Bottomless. I'm a free man now. I can walk away and never come back again. Ever. My own man. And thinking about it will fade, become a distant memory. The lake will keep its secrets. Except that it will always be the place where that poor little broken body was found. Let us hope that justice has been done. I shall stay for a while. I have unfinished business. May I leave my belongings here for just one more night? I shall go and sit by the lake until it's light. And then I shall drive into town and find that policeman who so thankfully dismissed me for the case and tell him that they must carry on searching the lake. They will find another broken body and I can tell them who it is. The Lake by Ellen Dryden featured James Aubrey as Ben Wheeler and Karen Archer as Isabel. Pauline Yates was Val, Francis Jeter, Ruth, Barry Woolgar, Chris, and Teresa Gallagher, Moonstone. David Thorpe was Jamie, Nicholas Bolton, Rick, Steve Hodson, the detective sergeant. Isabel Hewitt was Rosie, John Prendergast, Tom, and Hayley Thomas, the child's voice. Other roles were played by Rachel Atkins, Lyndon Gregory, Lala Lloyd, Michael Onslow, James Taylor, and Angus Wright. The music was composed and directed by Stephen Warbeck. The musicians were Hugh Warren, Steve Buckley, Steve Watts, and Martin France. The director was Ned Shai. Drama on BBC Radio 4 Extra. I've been obliged to detain young Jacob, Miss Halcombe, because he's been frightening his fellow pupils. Frightening them? How? He's been telling them that he's seen a ghost. Great stories. Some days it just happens, you know. Excuse them, we have a number of problems over. One decision between you and disaster. Great actors. If you know what's good for you, you'll keep the police out of this. If, for instance, there's a good reason why she shouldn't marry Sir Percival Glyde, oh, then no, must... please! Don't say his name! Don't say his name! Drama. Every day on BBC Radio.